about his deficit with women voters specifically, something that you can see very clearly in a lot of the polling. Listen to, to the argument that he made in Wisconsin just a few moments ago. About four weeks ago, I was saying, no, I want to protect the people. I want to protect the women of our country. I want to protect the women. Sir, please don't say that. Why? They said, we think it's, we think it's very inappropriate for you to say, so why? I'm president. I want to protect the women of our country. Well, I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to protect them. How do you think women hear that comment? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think women see that exactly for what it is. Uh, we have a long memories. There's no selective amnesia here. This is an attempt by Donald Trump to revise and rewrite history. Um, as he has stated, uh, he uh, stacked the courts um, and, uh, you know, played the critical role in the overturning of Roe, and he was jubilant about that and took uh, all the credit for it. And again, in Project 2025, written by Trump's friends for a Trump White House to advance Trump's agenda, institutionalize Trumpism, they lay it right out in black and white that Dobbs is just the beginning. Uh, so it is clear um, that uh, they want a national ban uh, on abortion, um, and that would stand to have a domino effect when it comes to reproductive rights and freedom from birth control and contraceptives to IVF uh, to Mifepristone pre-stone uh, and medication abortion. Yeah. So these are... Uh, well, and Trump has claimed he would not sign a, a national abortion ban. I know Democrats have said they don't trust that or believe that. Uh, in Wisconsin tonight, Harris is on stage right now. And, and I should have, Jeff Zeleny, who is there from CNN, he said that she was just interrupted by protesters who, who were chanting about a ceasefire happening now. Harris said, she also said that she's working as hard as she can to make a ceasefire happen and a hostage release. But this is something that we keep seeing showing up. And, and the question is how it shows up in the votes next week. Are you worried or do you think that the Harris and Walls campaign has done enough to address those voices? Well, Caitlin, um, I take the vice president uh, at her word that they're working around the clock uh, for a uh, exactly what we need, which is a bilateral and permanent ceasefire. Um, it is uh, also uh, notable that uh, they have been intentional. Um, I know um, Mayor, uh, Governor Walls uh, met with uh, some leaders of uh, the Arab and Muslim community recently. And in my experience with the Vice President, she's not afraid to have uh, hard conversations. Um, and so I'm glad that they do continue to um, actively do the work of earning as many votes as possible and building, um, you know, confidence and trust with community. I don't want to ever talk anyone out of their pain and their grief. It is unimaginable. It is real. Uh, it is horrific. We need a bilateral permanent ceasefire uh, to save, save lives. And we need uh, an offensive uh, arms embargo uh, to save Israeli lives, to save American lives, to save Palestinian lives. Yeah, and of course, Harris has said she does not support one of those. Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, thank you as always for your time tonight.